Hello, my name is Dr. Connor and I'm a dentist in Ireland. I decided to make this video um, because whenever I was preparing to do my MFDS, um, there wasn't very many resources out there on YouTube or any of those platforms that kind of gave some exam questions. So I thought it would be useful to other people to make some videos or make one or two videos with a few exam questions and talking through the answers and trying to give some explanation to the answers then as well. So let's jump in and have a look at our first question. So this question is, which one of the following bacterial species is not associated with adult periodontitis? Now, I'm not going to try and read all of those names because I will not pronounce them correctly. But this is quite a common question that comes up quite a lot, uh, particularly on the part one exam. And you're, you're not expected to know like what all of these bacteria do and how they work and the different you know things that they're responsible for. But it is useful to know some of the names of the bacteria that are involved with perio um, and the likes of that. And particularly one that comes up a lot is, is AA as well, which is the bacteria that's involved in aggressive periodontitis. And that's a really important one to know as well. The correct answer here in this question is D. So number two, what technique is usually used for the production of an apical flare with hand files? Is it crown down, step down, tug back, step back or step up? Now the answer here is D, it's step back, but it is important to know what these other terms around it as well, particularly tug back and crown down. I don't know if step down and step up are endo terms, um, but it's really, really useful to know those other terms around it as well. Crown down is how you would produce the apical flare if you were doing it with rotary instruments, but step back is is what we're doing if it's specifically hand files. Tug back is another one that we that we hear quite often that's associated with GP and making sure that that's at the the correct length and correct posi correct position. Now number three is a young child presents with blood crusted lips, pyrexia, and widespread oral ulceration. And what is the most likely diagnosis? Is it teething? Is it a traumatic injury? Is it primary herpetic gingival stomatitis? Is it hand, foot, and mouth, or is it human papillomavirus? So the picture on the right hand side kind of does give give a lot of really useful information there. But if we go through the the answers on their own, teething. Um, you know, yeah, okay, could be unlikely since, you know, we kind of see that most of the teeth are, are there and wouldn't really give that kind of presentation. Traumatic injury, yeah, this is, this is a reasonable answer as well to give, but the, the child likely wouldn't present with pyrexia um, if it was just a, a traumatic injury. C is looking very good. Hand, foot and mouth, um, again, probably would have a mention of something on the palms in the question and E, the human papillomavirus, wouldn't present like this. So the answer here is C. What is the name of the instrument shown below? Is it a Laster's retractor, a Ward's buckle retractor, a periosteal elevator, a rake retractor, or a Collins cheek retractor? It's a very, very common style of question to ask, what is the instrument that we're, they're showing you? Um, and this is one that you just have to learn and you have to do lots and lots of different questions to kind of recognize the different instruments then as well. Uh, the correct answer here is the Laster's retractor and that's used for for third molars. Think of last, Laster's retractor. And it's, it's more exclusively used for upper third molars um, as they're the last tooth in the arch as well. Now under our last question for this video, which one of the following defines the mandibular plane? And this, this is an ortho question. So is it porion to orbitale? Is it the posterior nasal spine to the anterior nasal spine? Is it gonion to menton? Is it porion to menton? Is it gonion to porion? So thanks for watching the video. And if you would like to make any more of these kind of videos with more exam questions, different questions, please let me know in the comments, like and subscribe, and I will try and make some more. Thanks for watching.